Hi, I'm Jonathan Stevens, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to take 3D Gaussian splatting scenes and put them in Unity. That's right, a game engine. And from there, you can do all sorts of things. And I'm just going to caveat here, I am not a Unity expert, and I know a lot of people like other game engines, but this is an interesting way to start, and there's a great GitHub project, which I'll show you guys, linked in the description, on how to get going quick. It only takes you a few minutes to get up and running. And if you don't know how to make a 3D Gaussian splatting scene, make sure you watch my beginning tutorial. I'll also link that in the description notes. Anyways, let's get into the video. And no, at one point, I kind of get tripped up in this and I will do a quick jump cut to say, whoops, I made a mistake. And hopefully you can learn from the same mistakes I made. See you guys in the tutorial. Okay, the first thing you need to do when you're getting a 3D Gaussian splatting scene in Unity is start with this GitHub repository that I'll have linked in the description notes. It's called Unity Gaussian Splatting, and it's created by this, um, this creator, Aris. Uh, I cannot say his last name very well, so I don't want to butcher it, but I'll make sure I linked it, and I also suggest following this guy online. He's got some incredible information on 3D Gaussian Splatting implementations. And he calls it Toy Gaussian Splatting Playground in Unity. Uh, I assume you know what you're doing once you get into Unity, but I will kind of walk you through how to get in there really quickly. And he's got great documentation here. So let's get to it. So the first thing I need to do is bring up my command prompt. I'm just going to type in CMD, launch command prompt. And I'm going to make this a little big. And I'm going to type git clone. And then go to this code box here and copy this HTTPS string and hit enter. And it's gonna clone that repository uh, into my user folder. You can always see where it cloned it to by default here. It was my C users, J-O-N-A-T folder, and that's where it'll be. So if I was to bring up my, my folder structure here, refresh it, you'll see Unity Gaussian splatting right there. So um, that's good, it downloaded everything I need. And then you will also, of course, need Unity itself. Um, it calls out in the project that you need 2022.3. So if I go to mine, I have 2022.3.9f1 LTS. So that's good. Um, I just did the base install. And so if I go to that Gaussian splatting folder, you'll see there's an assets folder. And within the assets folder, there's this GS test scene.unity. We're just going to double click to open that. And you'll see um, here we go. Continue access. Um, I had an error that I just clicked through that said that there was a mismatch in versions. His was for 7F1. This is for 9F1. Just know that I had no problems with the latest of the 2022.3. So again, this, this takes just a second here. Um, okay, so now we load it up. Um, the, the first thing we need to do is when you go up to this top here, where it says tools, Gaussian splats, and we need to create a Gaussian splat asset. So what essentially we're gonna do is we're gonna take a Gaussian splatting scene that you've already created, and we're gonna convert it to a format that Unity can read. And so I assume you've already created a scene. If you have not, go back, watch my beginner's tutorial and make your first, your first scene. Or you can find a sample somewhere. I think he linked one of the samples within um, the GitHub repository. I'm going to click this input folder. And um, I'm going to go to, this is my folder where I have my uh, Gaussian splatting models. And the, it should be in your output folder, I'm assuming. And for this one, I'm just going to pick this, um, this one of me. Now you want to make sure that you pick the model, like the, the container folder, not this subfolder with point clouds. So just hit select, you know it's right, because it'll say file size. For me, it was one and a half million, or one and a half gigs with 6.4 million point uh, spots in there. And then your output folder, um, I don't change that, but that's that's a, already a folder within the um, 3D, the, the Gaussian splatting project that you downloaded called Gaussian splatting right there with your scene. So um, then there's quality. So you'll notice that medium, your file is gonna be 287 megabytes, 5.3 uh, x smaller, which is great. But what does that mean? How does that mean for quality? If I go back to the the GitHub repository and you go look at um, Aris's um, 
profile, you can find his blog. And on his blog, he has this great article called Making Gaussian Splat Smaller. And I'll make sure I link this in the description as well. But if you go down, he shows you what those different presets look like. What I think is very telling is that from very high to medium, it looks pretty close. And you can blow these up, but like on this one, the reflections look a little better when you're at medium. But things start to fall apart when you get to low and very low. Um, and so it's up to you. For me, I'm just going to go back to my Unity project and I'm going to go to very high. I like to deal with the best. And it's going to make the asset even bigger, which is kind of silly, but that's fine. Um, so hit create asset. And this part should only take you several seconds depending on the speed of your, your, your computer. This might take a little longer. And once it's loaded, we just got to do a couple more clicks to get it actually into your scene. Okay, so now, now it's loaded. I'm just going to close this here, hit this X. And then you want to click on the Gaussian splats in your scene hierarchy. And then here I'll say script. Um, we want to take this asset here, and we're going to put that in this, uh, not script, in this asset here where it says missing. So just going to grab this, drag it right in there, and bam. So now it's, it's in the scene. Um, and from here, we can start to navigate around. Okay, so now it's in my scene. Um, I can navigate around. It, it, a couple notes, he said that your scene might not come in rotated quite right. Um, but once you get in there, so if we go here, you see there is already a, a rotation matrix, a rotation in there. You might need to rotate that even further to get that, that horizontal. Um, but that's in there. Um, and so that's pretty cool. You have a few controls here. You can change your splat scale. It's just like that other viewer. You can make them even bigger than normal. Um, so let me just reset this back to one. Um, your, your spherical harmonic order. So like how many colors each splat has. This I think might change the performance of the viewer. But I noticed things like in the back here, um, looking at, let's say, look at this building. You'll see how it makes a big difference in the details. So I, I like to keep that up high if you can, um, like so. And then, yeah, there's there's just some other options you can play around with. Render mode this is all debugging, but I think it's really cool. You can see all of the splats instead of as a point cloud, but as these like boxes and get an idea of like what splats make up the scene. So you have some big splats, you have some small splats. Um, but just make sure you're back in regular splats when you're navigating the scene. Um, and I am not a Unity expert, so I may be doing a little, a little bit of botching trying to go around here. But I just want to show you um, one thing that's cool. So I, I did notice that when you, when you play with this, there's no collision layers. And so you're going to have to like figure out how to set up some sort of collision if you want to navigate this as like a first person character. Um, but I was also curious, does this all interact with um, post-processing volume? So um, I'm just going to do that really quickly. So that's something that's fun. If you are new to Unity and you just kind of want to play with this, um, you can you can add post-processing. So if I go to my, my window, my package manager, and um, I just want to find my post-processing install that um it's going to install it to the project should just take a second here okay so now it's on my project i'm going to go uh move my face here i'm going to add a component i'm going to add this post-processing layer first um and go down here and make sure the target layer everything why not um, and then we're going to add a volume. So now um, with the post-processing volume, I can um, make sure it's global. I can then start to add these profiles and then add an effect. Um, I'm assuming you know what you're doing here. I actually have only played with this somewhat, but I'm going to put the color grading, which I think is interesting because I got this nice color grade on here. Um, one thing is I got to, uh, this will only really affect the game scene. And for some reason, it keeps coming in upside down. So let's see here. At this point, I need to pause because when I added post-processing volumes, everything got all wonky with my camera. I have no idea why. 
So I had to go add a new camera operator in there and make sure that is set as the parent camera or else every time I made any changes, I couldn't adjust the camera. It was, it was all wonky. Again, I'm not a Unity expert, but let's jump back into it and I'm gonna show you what I did in case you run into the problem I had. Okay, so I went to add um, post-processing to this scene. So if I go to Gaussian and Splats, you can see I have this layer and this volume and I added this camera by default. And um, if I go to my main camera here and I, and I go to, um, if this was like the one I was looking at, every time I launched this, everything was upside down. So I had to go add another camera and I just nested it in the main camera and that's my parent camera. So if I click on it, you can see I can move things up and down. So if I, let's say I look high, it's looking up. If I grab it again and look further down and look down, that's what I was, that's what I was expecting to have. Um, so one thing you can do, having like two screens really helps, but I can split screen these. Um, and so now you can see is I can, I can move one with the other. You can see that. Okay, and, and so once I'm happy with this camera, um, whatever I added earlier, I got to make sure that I go re-add the post-processing. So I added post-processing layer, not to this Gaussian splats, but to the sub camera. So this post-processing layer here, turn that on, make sure, you know, you set it to what the target layer, everything is. Um, my post-processing volume, make sure it's, it's global. And then from here, so you know, I can see my right screen with it on, I can like change my contrast. Um, I can make it really deep. So let me make sure it's all turned on here. Okay, so here we go. I can I can change the contrast. I'm gonna turn it on. You'll see on the right screen things can get like kind of dark and moody. Um, I can turn on, you know, like I can crush my greens, which is again like another moody thing you could do. Um, you know, all, all kinds of things. You can play with your, your channel mixers. Um, everything um what other effects we can add if you go in here there's all kinds of things that you can do um depth of field i mean that one could be very interesting as well um like play with your aperture focal distance um all all those different all those different effects that you can play with uh and get some really cool effects so um just wanted to show that once once you know what you're doing i'm assuming you know what you're doing here in unity you can take this camera you can make animations and you can get you can get some output that is going to be absolutely stunning and it's going to be super high quality so i hope this was helpful again i'm not a unity expert I, i'm going to dive into this but again i'm i i i'm just scratching the surface so what you can do is to get in here you can go vr you can do all kinds of things um, i just want to remind you that this uh, 3D Gaussian Splatting Project needs to be licensed to use it commercially. So if you're just playing around for your own learning, this is what this is great for. Um, and if you actually want to implement that training process, the viewer, all that, that is not the IP. That is not, um, that is not free IP. You got to make sure you license that. So if you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel and I'll be making more videos. I'll have this in VR, in Unreal Engine, all sorts of other things that do with nerfs and photos. Um, and I find this helpful. Uh, if you're running the same problems I do with Unity, it's probably just because you are you don't know how to use it like I do. But um, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.